Happy Monday, all you mentees. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition. And join me today for your advanced look at the Star Wars Legends, The Empire Omnibus, Volume 1 from Marvel Comics. Let's go ahead and get started. Welcome back to your home for Collected Editions. Before getting started, though, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on May 3rd. So, speaking of direct market, that's exactly the cover we're looking at here. This is your direct market cover. And for those of you that have been asking me what the difference is, is first... On the left hand side is your standard edition cover so basically your standard edition cover is going to be available everywhere amazon barnes and noble your local comic shop dime Bree collectors in stock trades walmart dcbs organic price books cheap graphic novels waltz comic shop it doesn't matter you can get the cover anywhere the cover to the right hand side that is known as the direct market cover and i've explained this if you go back to my video about the different size or the different types of collected editions the direct market cover is only available at your local comic book shop or places like cheapgraphicnovels.com waltz comic shop dime Bree collectors in stock trades organic price books those kind of places so those are the only places you can get that cover it's not available everywhere like walmart or amazon that's the big difference really everything else will be the same well i say that and sometimes the spines are different and the backs are different but let's go back and talk about this so this is the direct market cover. This is the one that's supplied by Dave Wilkins. This is from the Ghost Prison. I think it's issue number five. I just read it a couple of days ago. Uh, the spine here, Star Wars The Empire, volume one. Love seeing that. I hope we get a volume two. And with Vader and his lightsaber. And this is actually the key players right here in the story that you're going to be reading about. I'll explain when all this takes place and of course look at the artwork here in a second. Uh, but I do love the fact that they put Darth Vader, Bordeno Greenbark, and Dash Jennier all on the back cover. That's cool. And the book retails for $125. Dark times for the galaxy indeed because this book, man, it was brutal. I wasn't expecting uh, the type of stories in here. Let's look at what's underneath the dust jacket. Is this beautiful, beautiful piece right here of Vader with his lightsaber. It's awesome, man. It's painted. All right, let's get this book open. Talk a little bit about the stories in here, when this all takes place, and of course, look at the artwork and talk about the binding. All right, let's get this open. Um, you know, I waited to do these overviews because we're getting close to May the 4th. That's a big celebration for Star Wars. May the 4th be with you. Um, actually, I'm doing the Star Wars uh, new printing by Jason Aaron on that day. All right, so this collects all of this in here. This is your contents, what page it's on. I forgot to mention all the wonderful creators that put this book together, including the cover artist and the variant cover artist, the editors at the time. And we kick it off with just a quick recap as to when all the stories take place in here. Obviously, it's, you know, when Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. So this collects Star Wars Republic 78 through 80, Star Wars Purge number one. Uh, there's also the Purge miniseries Seconds to Die, uh, The Hidden Blade, which was freaking awesome, uh, The Tyrant's Fist. Uh, you also have... That, that was a two-issue uh, miniseries. Star Wars, Darth Vader, and the Lost Command. All five issues are included in here. Star Wars, Dark Times, 1 through 17. Star Wars, Dark Times, Blue Harvest. Uh, Dark Times, Out of the Wilderness. Blue Harvest was just like issue number zero. Out of the Wilderness is a five-issue uh, miniseries. And then Star Wars, Darth Vader, and the Ghost Prison, which is that cover I was talking about. Uh, within the very first story arc... Oh, and the book has 992 pages, I was going to say. Now, within the very first story arc, we are introduced to the key players that will play a big, crucial role in this. Of course, Darth Vader. He plays a big role in all of this. Let me scoot this up a little bit. But the other two key players are these Jedi Knights, uh, Das Janir and Bordeno Greenbark. They play a bigger role as they come back later on. 
And that's what the first storyline really does, which is just those uh, issues of the Republic. Now, look at this wonderful artwork, because in here there's so much talent. Man, you're talking about the writings of John Ostrander, uh, Randy Stradley, Alexander Freed, uh, W. Hayden Blackman, and then you have the art of Luke Ross, uh, Doug Wheatley, Jim Hall, and Rick Leonardi. There's an awesome... Uh, we'll look at those here in a second. Uh, Dave Ross and Louis Antonio, just to name a few of the artists that work on this book. So within these pages is where you're going to see Darth Vader just become completely ruthless. Uh, all of this takes place after Episode 3. So it's after Order 66, after the Jedi Knights are being hunted down. You saw that in Episode 3. And in this, this is where Darth Vader gets to become this full apprentice of Emperor Palpatine. And I just got to show you, this is, uh, I talked a little bit about this on Saturday, just how brutal and ruthless he is. So he's hunting down these Jedi Knights, and it seems a little repetitive, but it doesn't matter. The way that he comes across and just kicks everyone's asses, oh my gosh, it's awesome. So he's chopping limb from, he is ruthless, he doesn't care who he's killing, he is, he doesn't discriminate, doesn't matter. I mean, we're talking Anakin, right? That, I know it was a bad line in episode two where he's like, I killed them all. But anyway, it's like that all over again. At one point during this battle, he gets his hand chopped off. Um, <laughs> and it's so awesome because they're like, okay, we got him, right? He, he, he doesn't have his fighting hand. And what he does is he ends up using the force to pick up his severed hand that's holding the blade. This blade is freaking awesome, by the way. This is the Cortosis blade. So pretty much it makes the lightsaber useless for a few minutes. But like I said, he, t he takes his <laughs> the severed hand with the blade and just uses the force to throw it inside of a Jedi Knight. That is so badass. That's how just insane he is. He is taking a beating because, I mean, we're talking about Jedi Knights, right? Like people that he trained under, people that were over him, that were more how do I put this experience out in the battlefield? And you can find out how the rest of that story goes. There's a series of flashbacks in here too. Um, I actually like this story. Man, it's going to be hard not talking about each of these stories. This story is really interesting because we do see a Jedi Knight. But instead of the Jedi Knight like fighting to keep peace in the galaxy, the Jedi Knight's like, yo, Emperor Palpatine, I heard you was bad. You were on the dark side of the Force. Teach me the ways. And Palpatine's like, I can't, man. I already got it. like an apprentice. His name's Darth Vader. And she's like, all right, I'll make your deal. What if I kill Darth Vader? Can I then become your apprentice? So it's not all the stories that you think is going to go the way that you expect it to go. Not all the Jedi Knights are pure. Some of them are just trying to survive. Some of them are little, well, uh, how do I put this? Some of them are cowardly. And I didn't expect that. So it's really cool to see the reaction that different Jedi Knights take. So the, that's what the Purge really is, is where you see Darth Vader just flex his muscles. All right, but let's talk about this Rick Leonardi series right here. And this is Darth Vader and the Lost Command, and that's the cover that they use for the standard edition. So this pretty much is just Darth Vader. He sent out on a mission uh, to find uh, Grand Moff Tarkin's son, who went missing on an expedition. Uh, but this is where he runs into the Ghost Nebula, uh, and then Lady Zoro. Not Zoro with a Z. Zoro with like an S. But this is where you're going to find this particular story. All of this drawn by Rick Leonardi. This one is heartbreaking to read because there are flashbacks of Padme and his love life. While we got a little taste of that, mainly in episode 2, of course... I thought that this was written so well, and it kind of broke my heart to see him having those daydreams and flashbacks. And then, of course, all of that, you know, he finds Padme, and he's talking to her ghost. Now, is it her ghost, or is this somebody messing with him? You can find that out for yourself. There's this gorgeous artwork. I love the flashbacks and daydream scenes. Uh, they're done with a different tone for colors, and the frames are like this purplish frame. And then when we go back to present day, the nightmare that he's living... We go back to these black frames. Love that. Nice little touch. Subtle touches like that that I enjoy. Uh, let's skip 
a few pages to talk about a couple of other storylines. I there, those three characters that I talked about, or I'm sorry, the other two characters I talked about, they come back during this particular story right here, the Dark Times. This is where you're going to see a lot of them, and this is the type of artwork you're going to be seeing in here. Um, so this is the this is one of the most brutal books. It reminds me a lot of Episode Three. It's in that tone, so. If you're not into the violence side of the force, if you're not into, uh, you know, just seeing somebody slaughter sometimes innocent people that are in the way, this may not be for you. But if you want to see Darth Vader as like his most ruthless and just following this guy blindly, like you just, Sidious is like, yeah, man, you failed me again. You suck. Like he's always talking down to him like a bad kid. And Vader's like, yeah, I suck. I'll be back in my chambers. Like. I'll do better next time. It's just an interesting dynamic between both characters that you do see a little bit, of course, later on in like episode, especially episode six, with the big fight against uh, Luke. But all of this does take place before Luke and Leia, the big rebellion. This is immediately after episode three. Now you've seen that before in Marvel's uh, Darth Vader, uh, and then you've also seen it in the after episode four too. Um, but it's interesting to go back and read this version because this was written before the uh, the Marvel Dark uh, the Marvel Star Wars era, and just the differences that and approaches that they went. I still love the Darth Vader by Marvel. I think it's a great series. I don't think anybody should miss it, especially uh, the Gillen run that's just been reprinted. Charles Soule's run is excellent. Uh, this was just different, and I really enjoyed it. And I ended up really enjoying the characters that were introduced through the earlier pages uh, that show up through here. To me, though, the price of admission is completely worth it. Sorry, just showcasing some more of this artwork. This is just different types of artwork throughout this, and some of it's just mind-blowing. Um, but to me, the thing that makes it completely worth it is the ghost prison story. Oh, man. Especially issues four and five of this, it's just full out brutality. And it's got gorgeous artwork in here. Let me see if I can show you some of the action sequences. So this particular storyline sees the Emperor kind of taken out of commission for a while. And you get to see how Darth Vader reacts to that. How he handles that. So it's up to him to restore this Empire. And of course he's got to find the Secret Council of the Jedi. And figure out what exactly this ghost prison is. A lot of similarities in what's happened. You may have seen it actually in real life, but also, you know, in movies. But the sheer brutality of this particular uh, series, this is the one that I was like, oh man, this was awesome. And I'm so glad it was towards the end because everything else I thought I was, I was really enjoying. But when it got to this, I was like, damn, that is, look at that. That is freaking awesome. Just, wow. And this is the one that's drawn by Augustine Alessio. And just showcasing a little bit more of that. All right, let's look at the extras. Because I think I've talked enough about the books and the stories. So I'm going to show some of the variants back here. Not all of them. There's one by Douglas Wheatley. I believe this is from the trade paperbacks. Darth Vader and the Lost Command. Apparently there was a hardcover released of that. And rightly so, because that's a really good story. Um, here's some sketchbooks by Douglas Wheatley for the character studies. Backgrounds and settings. Look at that. Even Adam Hughes, who's probably familiar with all his sexy ladies, can't make anything sexy about that. He is freaking ruthless. Oh, this is awesome. This is uh, Rick Leonardi pages right here. This is from the Lost Command story arc. Some newer characters that appear through these pages. And this is Douglas Wheatley. Original pages from the Blue Harvest. His art is just awesome. There's a lot of that in here. So we'll skip some and get to this. Here is a Darth Vader print by Dave Dorman. And that's Walter Simonson right away, you can tell. Yeah, this is a Galaxy Magazine 11 covered by Walter Simonson. All right, let's take a look at this binding. 
So the book has 992 pages. We've seen bigger eyes, uh, but this one is printed at the iMac printer. And you saw how it lays over towards the back when I was showing these. I know these aren't spread pages, but just to kind of give you an idea how the book lays over and towards the front. The one thing I will say I noticed about this when, as I was reading it um, was it felt like there was dust on the pages just for the very first, I want to say about a hundred and something pages. And that's happened before. I think it's just from the printer. Uh, I wanted to showcase this too. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it's not dust. It's not anything, it was, but it did feel like that. And I, I remember that feeling before in another book and I can't remember what it was, but this is an iMac printer uh, book. So you do have some art bleeding through from the opposite page. Um, so I don't know if it bothers you, just want to let you know. If it doesn't bother you, you already know you're getting this book if you're a Star Wars fan. Even if you're not, man, this book is awesome. But that, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you've read this era of Star Wars, if this is your first time going into this era of Star Wars, or if you've read it already in the Dark Horse softcover omnibus edition, or the Epic Collections. Uh, but yes, if you've never read this, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. This was The Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Smash that like button. Don't forget to share the video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We are on Spreadshop and Patreon, and those are amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so, and thank you to our existing patrons. And more importantly, everyone, may the force be with you.